Hi guys, welcome back to the end of the first transfer window in our first season in the Premier League. Yes, welcome back guys to the series and as you can see, we have five games in, it's deadline day, we will get into that in just a moment. But as you can see, probably as expected, we've um, struggling. We're struggling, five games in, we've only won one. Won one, won one, won one, lost three, and quite frankly, I mean, maybe I'm being a bit harsh. Um, but as you can see, we won the first game of the season, which I thought great, upbeat. Then we lost to Leeds, then we lost, lost, well, drew with Liverpool, that one. That was a hell of a game, that. That game actually gave me more promise than the Villa game, because the way we played and fought back, um, like, in that game, was just fantastic. But then back down to reality against Norwich. I mean, I shouldn't be too hard on myself. You know what I mean? We're not expected to be here. We didn't get much better against Luton Town. Obviously, Luton Town and the game themselves are in League One. We played them in the Cup and we struggled. Um, we got the victory, but we did struggle. And then Man United. So, I don't want to be too harsh on myself, but not the best start. But when you've got Liverpool, Man United, teams like that. um. You gotta take that into consideration. I mean the run up itself, I mean, they've not really spread this season very nicely for me. I mean, you've got Newcastle and Tottenham in the next set. You got um I assume that's a cup, but then you've got again in the next month Tottenham and Chelsea and then Southampton, then Manchester City and Arsenal in the next month. It isn't realistic till December where we start getting some semi favourable fixtures. So um I'm not I'm not getting my hopes up for this season. I'm not getting my hopes up. For this season. We really haven't really had any more departures. We've only really had one more player come in since the end of the last episode. And have brought Mark Tra Travers in from Bournemouth. Joel Lumley was whining about going. As I did mention before. It was someone who was looking to replace. Which he still hasn't left even though I've tried. Um, and he did start the season. But he made some very, very sloppy errors. Basic shots and he was dropping them. Um, so that just sort of prompted me to make the change and bring in bring in a younger keeper. And quite frankly, at four hundred and fifty thousand pounds, I mean, again, another bargain. If you actually look around, I haven't spent that much. It's more going on, um, like wages and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, we find ourselves. 16th in the table after five games. Obviously, Wet Wolves, I'm assuming, are in Europe. Of obviously, probably going to knock us down a few. Um, so, the plan is for today, on deadline day, is I'm going to need... Well, I want to ship a keeper out. I want to ship him out. I feel like I do need one more centre-back um, to give us some sort of depth because I, I expect and hope a Gilvy will go. So, that will leave us just with... Um, the cells, Gibson and Raggett, which I don't think is enough for the season. Um, so I'm probably looking at bringing another set of back on the basis that Gilvy goes out. And then the left back position, obviously, Keen Bryan is very unhappy about being here now. So he could go and a Gilvy. So I'm probably looking at a new centre back and a new left back. Um, on the basis that I'll probably shift to two essentially left backs out and a goalkeeper out. Other than that, I mean, I could maybe, if I can find some depth, um, if I can find some ability to add one more quality player in the attacking positions, um, I think I'll do that. Um, but but if I don't, I don't feel like it's the end of the world. Um, so I will run through deadline day. Um, and obviously I will come back if there's any exciting news as we go through deadline day. And then we can summarise at the end what um, what squad we have going forward and how we um, feel we may do. Obviously, as you can see there, £6 million wage budget, um, transfer budget, sorry, and £51,000 in wages. So I've got a little bit to play with, but mm, I'm not getting me up up here. But guys, I'll be back when I've got news. Well, welcome back, guys. Deadline day has just finished. And, well, I didn't manage to get any of the um, players I wanted out. And trust me, I tried. Nobody was interested in taking any of them. Um, but I did manage to spend what money we did have left and bring in two players. 
to cover certain areas. One is a massive gamble because I brought him in on like a minimal scouting. So I had an idea of what his stats were like, but not not loads. And one of them was just a centre back to cover cover things. As you can see, the st- are probably at the moment the um club's finances are a bit insecure, but you stay in this league and I think I'll be fine. Um, but let's just get into the players we did manage to bring since no one else left. I did go and bring in this guy from Middlesbrough, centre-back. Nothing to write home about, nothing fancy. But like I said, I did need an extra centre-back in there. Um, not like a Gilvy who can play there, but is, you know, not really. Needed a better centre-back, so I brought him in relatively cheap. You know, two and a half million, something like that. And then a relative wage. Six foot two, good jumping reach, strong lad. Seems like a solid cover. And then there was um, Kanya Fujimoto, if I've pronounced that correctly. Um, and as you can imagine, he is Japanese. And these, uh, this is the first time I'm seeing the stats myself, I'll be honest, as in clearly. There was always the in-between, in-between. I have spent the best part of £10 million altogether with him, and his wage is £40,000 a week. So, And he did want to be star player. So... I've took a massive gamble here um, because it may not pay off and it may not work. But look at his stats so far. I mean, technique, passing, vision, you know, his crossing, dribbling. He looks like a hell of a player. And I've brought him in for this team that I've never heard of before in the Portuguese Premier League division. And other than his jumping reach, because obviously, and his strength, I mean, yeah, all right, maybe off the balls a bit. Of a gamble, but positioning, teamwork, vision, work rate, composure, decisions. You know, he can cross a ball, he can dribble, first touch, passing technique. I mean, um, I mean, only time will tell. But I feel like this is a gamble that well paid off. Um, so what I will do now is I will go in just a minute. I will go register the team, and as you can see, even with me pretty much putting our finances at a massive risk. Um, we still are the second lowest wage in the division, so it just show the leap we have to get to to compete with the rest. Um, I mean, more than half um, half the wage budget than the last team we are looking to take over in this five course supremacy in Southampton. Um, so I wonder, so I'll just go the next day and I wonder, now that's all done, um, I wonder where that leaves us in terms of where the bookies think we'll finish. So we'll have a look at season preview. And yep, still flambar second bottom. None of our signings have made a difference. Um, not that I suspected the wood um, in reality. Um, but I'm a bit more confident than that. Um, some weird, um, weird changes there. I mean, look at the new managers. Uh... Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is now the Sheffield United when manager and Re- David Moyes is the Reading manager. So that is interesting. Um, but yeah, flat back second bottom. Um, so I'll go and register the team, and then we'll have a look at um, we'll have a look at what the team is and how I feel like we're gonna do. There we have it, guys. So let's just have a quick run through the team as it is now. Obviously, in goal, we're going to have Mark Travers. Mainly, Joe Lumley is going to be our backup goalkeeper now, even though he did get the most clean sheets last season. He is going to be our backup goalkeeper. On the right-hand side, obviously, we've got our new right-back in Castina with Todd Kim deputising for him. And we've got our new centre-back in as well. So, we've got Lascelles, Gibson, Lack of Vitti, I want to say, and Ragger, which I feel like is solid there. And it'll be the same on the other side. Our left back is probably over too many now. I mean, I did have to get rid of them too, maybe bring one in. But obviously, I know it says centre backs, but they both tend to play left back. So, King Brian or Gilvey deputising for Tovalo. In the middle, we have got a packed bunch of players. Let's get rid of him down there because I don't even think he's registered now. Get him down there. But pack bunch of players. Doherty, Smallbourne, Grimes, Miranda, Gibbs White if needs be, and Savile. I think we are well stocked in that area. And obviously that same goes to the position there. Attacking midfield, even though I don't really play it. I play two up front. 
obviously we're going to have Hajimoto who will be playing in there if he's the one, if we change to this formation. On the wings now, I think we're definitely well covered, bringing in Brennan Johnson. We've brought in Bagalsman who, Bagalsman who can play there and Linger, Linger, I want to say, who can play there. Morgan Gibbs-White, who's going to play on the wings and obviously Hajimoto as well. And then up top, we've got Cam Archer, Dan Scala and Volgalsma. And obviously, there is a few players that can play around there um, if needs be, if we're a bit short on players. So let's have a look at how our new look team would line up this season. Um, there is a bit of depth here, so this will rotate generally. But we are just about to play Newcastle. Um, so now it seems like a good time to show you guys how I feel like the team would generally line up. Obviously, I would have Lascelles in the team, but he's injured again. Cons a concern there. But as it is, you've got Travers in goal, the new number one. Toffolo, Gibson and Raggett in the middle. From last season, obviously, there would be the new centre-back in there in Lacoviti, Lac if needed. Um, but Lascelles would be in there and Castina on the right. Obviously, we've got Grimes in the middle with Gibbs White, who I'm going to try there today. But generally, we do have Will Smallbourne, George Savile, um, players like that. And obviously, Johnson on the left is an inside forward. And our new player, Fujimoto, on the right-hand side. I mean, star player. Let's get him straight into the deep end and see what he can do. And as usual, the two star boys up front in Archer and Scarlett. That is a team I'm suspecting majoritively will be the main team. We've obviously players coming off the bench, um, but there is going to be a few, like this lad who may, who may surprise and bring in a bit more. But we'll see. Um, I'm going to see how this formation goes as well because I love the two lads up top. But we may have to sit back and put more players in midfield and play more of a defensive role. So let's not waste any time. Let's get into the game away in Newcastle United. I mean, with their big money and stuff like that, um, they've not had the best start either. But I don't suspect they'll stay down there. Oh, this is going to be good. Um, but we are aware of them, and obviously we are expected to lose. I imagine we're expected to lose a lot of the games this season. But maybe we can spring a surprise. You never know. No, no never mind. I mean, we've two minutes into the game. Uh, <laughs> we... Um, this could be tough. This could be tough. Um, but it's it's early on yet. It's a long season. Let's see what I mean. Let's just see whether we made the right decisions at the end of the season. Not six games in, but I must admit, I feel like I haven't got no. What are we doing? I feel like I haven't got enough height in there, and I feel like that could be the thing that costs me. I mean, our fullbacks seem very weak defensively. I know I brought in attacking fullbacks, and I feel like that may have been a bad decision. Um, because it's all good going forward, but uh, we need to be better defensively, especially in our first season when we are expected to lose most of the games. We realistically need to be more solid at the back, good foundations, and work on there. And I may have messed that up a little bit. I mean, we're nine minutes in. I'm 1-0 down. We've had plenty of highlights and none of them been for us. And Pedro Porro is causing us lots of trouble. Well, we did go five minutes without highlights. So, ooh. It's not a penalty. No, your free kick is not a penalty, it's not in the box. Yeah, no height, no height. I hope we're going to get counter attacked by Matt, Matt Pagan. Ooh, I mean, I don't want to be a pessimistic pessimist here, but I think we're going to have to have a look into this formation. I don't really want to take it off positive. I don't really want us to sit back too much. But. Uh, no boy. This is going to be tough. I just think we're going to have to. We need more bodies in. 
further back, I think. I think we need more bodies in midfield. Um, because we are just... This is going to be an ugly game, I think. I mean, they were below us in the league. I mean, that kind of says a lot about the point. And we haven't even looked close. Oh, come on. We haven't even looked close. I think now the squad's established. I'm probably doing this the wrong way around. Ooh, what a save. I'm probably doing this the wrong way around, but now the squad's established. Um, and this is my lot, essentially. I may have to have a tweak around with... What are you looking at? A penalty? There's never a penalty. We may have to have a look around at the formation and see if there's something that can make us a bit more secure rather than just open at the back. Um, that's something we may have to look at to adjust things. Because we've got some good talent in there. I just think defensively we're still very weak and it's showing. Um, I suspect the sacrifice is going to come from one of the strikers. Um, which is a shame because the lads do well up there, but neither of them can play further back. That was sloppy. That was sloppy. We can't be giving the ball away there. I must say, I know this sounds absolutely ridiculous to say, but Travers does look like a more secure pair of hands compared to um compared to Lumley, which I guess is something. I mean, you've done well. I mean, we really haven't. <laughs> like, what's the point of pretending? I mean, maybe maybe I drop this back a bit, drop the tempo, um. feel like I'm at a point where I may just have to not don't worry about getting in the box just do just try and try and create a few things um but don't make it you have to get it all the way to the box first see if we can bang a few see if we've got a worldie or two in us at some point oh never never I thought that was um I thought I thought it was a stroke of genius by me there straight away after doing the tactics The uh, problem is, is, again, like I've just said, we haven't really got much height, and it tells. Go ahead, put it in, put it in, put it in. Yes! Come on! Get in! I mean, maybe that's the way we go. We just slow down the pace a little bit. Maybe we slow the pace down. Give our players more time to think, rather than expect them to rush and, like, you know, get it up the pitch rather quick. Because I think we're rushing too up. We're rushing up too quickly, which is leaving us, especially in the middle, too exposed. I still think we need to change the formation to secure things up in the middle, but maybe we're leaving ourselves a bit too exposed. I mean, that wasn't nice. By, by trying to play a bit too quick. I need to encourage the lads, because that's something. I mean, we're st I'm encouraged by that change of there, I mean, yes, yeah, we haven't really done much, but we seem to have calmed down a bit, and this is where they go and put it, you know, I was going to say this is where they go and just put it to bed, don't they? I mean, come on, I think, uh, I mean, that was a hell of a header, back to his own player, come on, lads. Oh, uh, what are they doing? Um, okay. Let's change things up a bit. Grimes can come off for Smallbone. Um, that seems like the fair thing to do there. I'm going to bring him off because he looks like he's doing all right, but... Nothing too much there. I'm going to leave it at that for now. I mean, the lads up front aren't doing too bad, either. According to the, the ratings, aren't too bad, considering, you know, 
We haven't really done that well at all. Come on. Oh, never. Ugh. Definitely give me food for thought, though. Like, it really, really has. Um, Give me some more encouraging signs. I'm not going to lie. Come on, Burn. Put yourself on that pitch. I know you've scored a world year two for us before, and you can do it again. Well, that's full time, guys. Um, two one defeat, well deserved defeat. I mean, just look at the stats. I mean, the first twenty minutes we were an absolute disaster. Well, half an hour, we were an absolute disaster. Showed absolutely nothing going forward. It was all them. Um, didn't really look secure uh, at all. But that tweaking um tactics halfway through the game calmed us down a bit, and we did sort of get back into it. Um, so that is encouraging, possibly going forward. Obviously, it is Newcastle away. I suspect they're not going to be sitting around the um, bottom half for very long. Um, but we do find ourselves in the relegation zone. Um, I feel like this is going to be an in and outy job for us more, so the season in and out of that red. But as long as after 38 games, we're not in that red. I mean, especially this first season. Um, I have tried to bring younger players in that are permanent, so I've only brought in two, one loan signing, compared to the loan FC we have been previously. Um, I feel like if I can play those lads all season, we survive, then they'll develop and become better, and then as a team, we become better next season. That's the theory anyway. Um, as long as we don't get sacked first, um, or we don't get relegated, a lot of those players will then go on uh, and be even better for ourselves and make us stronger and obviously they'll develop as well but there we have it guys deadline day is finished obviously the squad has been finalized a new winger in a new center back in pretty much new team across the board which i feel like was needed but this is our lot we haven't started great we've won one of our first six lost four of them but we are portsmouth we have just got promoted when we weren't supposed to we are expected to go back down but we'll fight we will fight. We will keep going. Maybe you tweak the formations. Maybe I tweak the, tweak the tactics. And hopefully, I figure out the correct formula before it's too late and we get, get relegated. But guys, if you have enjoyed watching this episode and all the previous episodes and would like to see how Portsmouth get on in this Premier League campaign, then feel free to drop a like and su subscribe on the channel. And comment down below uh, your thoughts and feelings on the series so far and how you think it could progress and whether you feel like i'm missing a trick you know any advice is welcome but guys i will be back a couple of months into the season to get a proper feel of how we feel this campaign is going to go uh, maybe a quarter of the way into the season so we can get a vibe of um where we're really going to be this season i suspect probably where we are now um and then we can see look look ahead to the rest of the season and see if we can See if I fix the problems early on. I'll see whether it's going to be a long slug and a disappointing season. But nevertheless, guys, I do appreciate you coming out and watching this episode with me. And if you do enjoy it and you want to see the next one, I'll see you guys in the next one.